Hello all you beautiful people, how you doing here today? This is Lava Temptress and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. Hi! Today we're going to be talking about more Tinker's Construct 116.5, but we already went over the smeltery, how to get started, the melter, all that cool stuff, including all the extras. So today we're going to be talking about the foundry. Now if you missed any of the ones before, I will put a link up above. I have a full playlist. I do go through uh, pretty much everything, so yeah. All right, so we're gonna start with the recipes, but I will try to put um, a channel marker in here for when we go over how the foundry and some of the other stuff works. All right, so first of all, let's start going through the recipes. Now, um, you do make kind of a grout, kind of like, you know, the smeltery, but this is all based off nether stuff. And this would actually be really, really awesome if you were in a pack that you started in the nether. This gives you a way to use tinkers without having access to some of the other stuff, which I think is pretty awesome. So for this, you're gonna use magma cream, gravel, and soul sand. And each of that recipe will make two nether grout. And even the nether grout itself looks kind of cool, right? All right, and like the other stuff, you simply cook it. Uh, I did not grab any out, but even simple coal, you can cook it in the um, furnace, just like you would the regular grout. And what it does is it creates these bricks. So as you can see, I left it cook for a little bit. Then we get these scorch bricks. So that's what we're gonna use for the main thing to make all our different pieces. Now, a lot of these recipes you'll find to be quite similar to the way you make the smeltery pieces and some of them are a little bit different. So first of all, to make the bricks, it, which is what I used here to decorate, they look pretty cool, right? So to make those, you're simply gonna do the four together like you normally would. And that makes the bricks. Then for the table, same recipe, you're just gonna use the scorch bricks instead. And the way these are, like, they just have a bit of a different texture. So, like, if we compare it to the smeltery ones here, you can tell these are pretty black. And these are more of a brownish. But it makes them kind of cool. I like it. I like the difference. All right. And then for the basin, again, same recipe shape. And it'll make the basin, then the drain. And, of course, each recipe makes two now. Now here's where it starts to get a little bit different. Now for the uh, scorched fuel gauge, you'll still have the four on the outside, but instead of glass in the middle, like with the smeltery, you're gonna use nether quartz. Again, it, this is all centered around being able to gather all these materials in the nether, which is kind of awesome. All right, now for the scorched alloy ore. This one is different than the melter and we'll go through that. But what you're gonna do is take that fuel gauge that we just made and put the bricks around it and that's gonna make the alloy -er. Now, of course, we're still gonna need like drains and stuff. So you're gonna make obsidian panes. Now to make an obsidian pane, all you have to do, and I have some obsidian here for demonstration purposes. So just put some obsidian in here to melt you know, like normal. And then what you're gonna do is instead, you're gonna pour it onto a table and that will make us the pain as soon as this is available. And one of the cool things is this will actually change and show that there is a liquid available. Mm -mm. With it being the dark purple, it's hard to tell, but there you go, that'll make us the pain. And that is what we need for that recipe. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, you're gonna use the panes here with the bricks. And that is for the duct. And uh, we'll go over how to use that because it's a little bit different. And then for the drain, wait, duct. Oh, drain, sorry, yeah, that one's the drain. So that one's just like the one that we use in the smeltery, you put the thing on it and it just drains it out. Now this one is the duct. So this one is two cobalt ingots instead of the obsidian panes. And then this one is pretty cool because you can use a bucket or copper can, and I will demonstrate. And you can kind of 
automate it. It's pretty awesome. All right, next for the ingot tank, we're gonna use again, instead of glass where we normally would have it, it's gonna be the quartz with the scorched bricks. And then for the scorched glass, which I did not use on this one, but again, like the big one I made there, you can make the foundry out of different materials, just like you can the smeltery. And the glass is one, you just cannot use it on the bottom like usual. All right, so that's just another quartz in the middle with the four brick makes the glass. And let me just take this out and show you the glass because just like the other kind of glass, it does connect together and you can see it makes this really smooth transition, which is beautiful. All right, so next up we need to make panes. So you're gonna take six of the scorch glass like you would regular glass and make the panes and uh, the panes by themselves again look pretty cool connect all that good stuff but that is so we can make these scorch lanterns now, these are pretty awesome and you'll see I have them decorating the place but it's three of those three of the scorch bricks and an iron ingot each recipe makes three now the smell tree does have one too and that's what the smell tree one looks like again the smell tree stuff is more black and those I have filled with lava. The scorched ones are more brown, as you can see the difference here and here. And the scorched ones I have filled with the blazing blood. Now, one of the things we're gonna go over is how to get blazing blood easier than what we've discussed before, because let's face it, it's a little difficult, right? But these are pretty easy to fill. You just even put them below a tank, use that, and ta-da. There you go. It's beautiful. All right. Now, there is a difference quite a bit. And if you notice it right away, there's a huge difference between the way the foundry is made and the way the smeltery is made. And that is the foundry, you have to have the corners. The smeltery, you do not. And quite often, I actually make it without the corners, like so. And you can still make it in different sizes. It just has to be square, and that is still the largest size for the foundry. However, with the foundry, you use more fuel the bigger it is, so bigger is not always better. All right, but how do we make the foundry controller? Okay, so we're going to come over here, and I have... Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. There we go. So I have a brick in here, just a simple scorched brick, like so. So you put it in a basin, and once you have melted obsidian in here, which we already did, then you're just gonna pour over it. Now I do have this automated. You can automate it simply just like you would with the smeltery. This, I just have a hopper underneath, but you could also put the chest. You could put all different kinds of things. I have the lever, so if I want it to keep going. So for instance, I have obsidian in there, and I could tell it to keep going. Now here is a duct. Now I have a duct in here. And for this one, I have a copper can. And you'll notice this one has obsidian in it. So if there's obsidian in the foundry, it'll automatically come through here. Now, of course, I didn't have enough to make a full one, so it's not going to keep going because I used it on the foundry and the uh, playing that we made over here. But it would keep go going. So how do we do this? Well, the copper can we went over before, but let me just show you. The, uh, get my stuff together here. All right, so the copper can, the recipe for that, uh, stop typing in there. The recipe for that is just the three copper and it makes three of the cans. Let me take one out here because I'll demonstrate again how to do this. Now, I will show you on the other side because I have some of these set up. And I will actually put the rest of this in. Uh, but what we're going to do, this is going to automatically go through there because that's the way I have it set. But once you have a copper can, you just set it on your table. Once the liquid is done, which you'll notice this is more of a black. And when there's liquid in here, it does change color based off what the liquid is. And we are going to put some other stuff in here. So see, now it is like a purple. So we're going to put it in here. And now I have... A copper can with the molten obsidian ingot. 
So that's what you put inside these ducts in order to automate things. So any obsidian will automatically come through here. Well, the foundry is quite a bit different. Like I said, we're gonna let all the obsidian go through. And while that's going, we're gonna take out some, uh, go over here, we're gonna take out some cobalt. And I'll show you why, because the foundry does something that's actually kind of cool that the smeltery does not. All right, so it's just obsidian in here. I'm gonna put as much in here as I can. You notice it does cook pretty fast, but I do have blazing blood in here. But you'll notice we don't just get cobalt when we do this, which is one of the cool things. So if you'll notice, there's cobalt. We had 11 blocks of that, but we also have molten iron. So one of the things that's cool about the foundry is it gives you excess of whatever you put in here. Not with all things, obviously the obsidian didn't, but I also melted the obsidian blocks. So that's where you're gonna go to your fantastic foundry book. Now the recipe for this is just a nether grout with a book, really simple to make. And uh, if we go back to the very beginning, there's all these different things in here and it's very, very useful. I always recommend you read these books uh, because sometimes even though I've explained them to you very well, it gets confusing later on. So it gives you plus six nuggets per ore, which is awesome because if you remember, the foundry only gives you plus three extra nuggets. So it does give you a little bit more Another thing that this does is it doesn't mix anything. So you can combine anything in here that would normally mix. So for instance, to make the new manulin recipe, we would use netherite scrap or netherite ingots, whichever. So if we put some netherite scrap in here, uh, you'll notice it's not gonna mix with the cobalt to make the manulin we actually have to do that a separate way. Okay, so now we have the molten debris, which of course is the netherite. Now, I did have this automated over here, uh, but these two are filled up and they're like, no. So I put all ducks here. And so if I took another can, so for instance, this one, I have a copper can with molten cobalt. So if I put it in this one, because we have extra in there, and I want to specifically show you because this is not the bottom. Okay, let's switch it. Let's put iron on the bottom, right? So iron is on the bottom, but we told this one we want cobalt. So if I turn it on, it's doing cobalt, even though, let's turn that off for a minute, even though that is not the bottom one. Okay, now here is a cool thing. We can even just take this out and move it over here. Oh, that one wasn't full anyway, okay. So that one should have been going. So if we turn these on, they can actually go at the same time, which if you know anything about the smeltery, that is not possible with a smeltery. So these will keep going until it fills these up or until it runs out like the iron just did which is really cool. Now this one I have filled with netherite and this one I have filled with cobalt. And the reason why is because now we're gonna use the scorched alloy air. Now this one you can automatically put stuff in the middle, but this is the way to mix things. Unless you're doing a smeltery with the foundry, you can't mix things, alloy them. So this is how you do it with a scorched alloy air. So, I'm gonna shift because if not, it'll put the liquid directly in there. So for instance, if I did that with a copper can, it's automatically gonna put the stuff in there. That's not what I wanna do right now. So if you're trying to put the tanks there, you wanna shift and put the tank next to it. Now I'm gonna make manulin. So to make manulin, we need the cobalt and the netherite, which we went over before. And of course you have to have a fuel tank underneath. So this one I have filled with blazing blood. So now if we take our netherite, we're gonna put it there. We go in and access this. It's gonna tell us we can alloy. 
but there's something sitting in there right there, so it's not going to recognize that it can make an alloy. So what we're going to do is take that out, and as you can see, it automatically mixes the two that I have there, and it automatically turned them into molten magnum, which is pretty awesome. So that is how you alloy with this type of setup, since you cannot do it in the foundry here. Pretty cool, I like it. And again, you can make your, it different, just the same way as we did with the smelteries. You know, we made them all different configurations, different blocks, different sizes, as long as the bottom part is square. That's what's important. So if you wanted it to be see-through, like what I have here, you could use the scorch blocks. There's also scorch ladders, all that cool stuff. All right, now, another thing we want to do, we want to get blaze blood, because blaze blood is something that we're going to use quite a bit, especially for the foundry, but you can also use it for the, um, the smeltery. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, like I said before, you can get blazes to melt in your smeltery. Um, let me actually get in the nether and I'll show you how, how I have one set up. Okay, so here is one of the ways of setting it up so blaze automatically give you blaze blood. And of course that's using an existing spawner. I took everything away from it. So I just found one, you know, at the nether fortresses like normal. And what I did is just set one up basically around it. All you need to do is have it just around it enough so the blazes fall on here and die. And then you have to make sure that you have a source of fuel. So right now this one doesn't have any fuel. So what I could do is I have something on my sword called melting. And if you kill blazes, I'm just going to fill that up. If you kill blazes, so if instead of letting them die here, if I kill them with my sword, which I'm in creative, of course, right now, and I wouldn't want to not be in creative in here. But uh, let's see if I go back out here. It will not cook those. So we need that. But um, yeah, you, you don't want to kill them in here. You want them to just die, let them die naturally. But as you can see, it fills up with blazing blood. So, it's not very fast though. But what you would do is just put it and have it go fill up a tank. So for instance, if we grabbed out a faucet, a, let's just do a drain. And if we filled up like a fuel gauge or a tank, any of these would work. Uh, so if I just break that, and again with as with the smeltery, the stuff is still there as long as you don't break the controller. So if then I put that on there and that down there, ta-da. It'll fill it up. You can also have it where the duct work comes out here. You could set it up so it automatically go back in here and keep this. But um, I do not have this chunk loaded, of course. If possible, if you have something in your pack that you're playing, if you could chunk load it, that would be even better. But then you can simply take this back and go use it wherever you would need. You would obviously break it with your pickaxe, not the way I did it. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the ways you can get the blazing blood. Like I said, my sword has melting on it. And I'm gonna show you, that's where you see the tank and the tank capacity. So if I kill a blaze, just by going into the nether, if I kill a blaze with my sword or any weapon that you have that melting on, then you can also get it that way. So let's go check and see how to do that. So meet you back at the base. Okay, so here we are back at our base. And here's what I want to show you. This is what you're going to use. So you need a seared melter, two buckets of lava, and two blazing blood. In order to put that on a tool, you just have to have an upgrade slot available, and then that's gonna add melting. 
melts attacked entities and items dropped. So not only would you get the blaze blood by killing them, but you could also get blood. Uh, you can get liquid slime, all kinds of stuff. But the most important one I would see it being used for is probably for the blazing blood. So that is what I've added to my sword. But um, you can also add it to anyone you'd like. Now, if you want to upgrade the tank size, you're just going to put a seared fuel tank in there. And then if you add that, then you will see that our tank size is 1296. Our tank capacity is 2448. There you go. Whereas before, it was 1296. So now, if I were to kill some blazes, and let's see... Uh, uh, not creative survival. And uh, I did that wrong because I didn't grab the blaze first. Okay, hold on. Okay. I grabbed just a potion of fire resistance because we're going to be fighting some blaze. But if we spawn a blaze and simply attack them with our sword here and kill them, then it increases how much we actually have in here. So you notice we have 1376, whereas before we had the 1296 or whatever it was. Uh, and there we go. So if you go to a blaze spawner, you don't have to just put a smell tree. A smell tree would also work. It does not have to be a foundry to set up that blaze farm to get the blazing blood like what I was talking about. You can also do it with the regular smell tree. But now you'll see we have 1416. So you can also just go there and kill a mob with your sword or whatever tool you have equipped with the melting ability. Now, how do we get this out? How do we get this out? Well, here's the fantastic thing. You can simply right click on a tank and you'll see now it has nothing in it. So now we would have to kill more, but if we kill more, I also wanna show you, you can also put it in other things. Ooh. Those blazes hit hard, am I right? All right, so you can also put it in other things. So for instance, kill him real quick, thank you. Uh, you can also put it in the tank in here so you can fill up your small tree, but you can also right click on the uh, foundry. Well, it's supposed to work. Well, of course you can right click there. It filled it with to 80. But you're supposed to be able to um, also just put it in the smeltery. So let's see if it's just not working on the foundry. And if we can put it in the smeltery over here. Let's try this again. And of course, killing them doesn't give you that much. But neither does the uh, killing them with the blaze thing. But let's see. If we click on here. This one is pretty full. So if we click on here. Hmm supposed to automatically add it and it is not well there you go you can add it to the tanks all right let's go back in other mode okay the other reason I do uh, the tutorials and creative it seems to be easier to show you how to do certain things though so that's the only reason I do that now the other thing you could do is you could have a tank and have it set up to go into the smeltery, but you can also fill these any kind of the tanks. Um, so yeah, makes it so we can just go over here. Oops, we just we just put it into. Well, we just added it to our sword. It's fine. It's fine. It's because I'm in creative though. So don't do that. <laughs> It'll completely fill up your sword. Yeah. But if I had something in here, for instance, from killing this, in creative, of course, it just keeps going, so I could keep filling it up. But that's just in creative. Normally, it would just fill it up with whatever you actually have. So... All right, I'm trying to think if there was something else I missed. Uh, let me check my back. Okay, so we already went over the how to make the foundry and all that. And of course you can set it up and automate it.
just like you would other things. Um, make sure you put your corners. Uh, I've seen a lot of people, they don't understand it's not working. You do have to have the corners on the foundry, so make sure you do that. Remember that the only way you can alloy is this. And I think that's it. There's all the different blocks, like the ladders and stuff. Um, but I just wanted to go over the basics of that. Next time, we actually will be going over more of the abilities you can add to your tools and weapons now because they are quite a bit different than what they used to be. And quite a bit cool. There's some cool things you can do now. All right, that's it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave those down below. Um, I will put a link um, in the first part of this video to the playlist that the rest of these tutorials are on in case you missed any of those and have questions about those. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. So till next time, this is Love Attemptress. Don't forget to subscribe with the notification bell so you don't, don't miss any of the videos that come out. I will be doing lots more tutorials, so don't miss out. All right, until next time, this is Love Attemptress. Don't get burned. Bye!